Happy book day, y'all! Welcome back to the Bee Cave Book Call. We're really excited to be here today. My name is Kate Sweeney, and I'm the Public Services Manager here at the Bee Cave Public Library. And I'm here with a special guest, Melissa Burke, who you probably know best from our story time room. So she has some new picture books that she wants to talk about today, and we're really excited to hear from her and all of her little tips about them. So I'll turn it over to Melissa. What do you got to? What do you have for us today? Hello, everyone. So the first book I want to talk to talk about is called A Greyhound a groundhog and it's by Emily Jenkins and illustrated by Chris Applehams. and what I love about it is that this is a word play book and this book is everything a word play book should be there's rhyme there's tongue twisters and it's even reflected in the text so even the shape of of the words like the words around and around or in that shape, curving around. So it just makes a tremendously fun read. And I can really see just parents and children cuddled up and just laughing and having so much fun with this. Because at the heart of it, it's just a playful story about two little animal friends. And the illustrations really draw you in. It's just a big sense of humor in this story. But mostly it's just lots of fun to even just say the words in the story. And that's one of the things that we want children to enjoy about books is just hearing the sounds of language. So I love this book. It's fun too because the greyhounds are inherently just kind of a funny looking animal. Yes. So it, there's something playful about it just being a greyhound and a groundhog. Right. Two animals you would normally never put together. Um, one quite graceful and the other cute but not so graceful. Really right. fun. The watercolors are beautiful in it too. They really are. There's kind of the text is pretty spare, and the watercolors are just a beautiful palette, and it just makes for a really fun read, an engaging one, I think. How fun! Oh, I like it. Yes. What else do you have for us? Round is a, another picture book that's brand new to our collection. It's by Joyce Sidman, the award-winning author, and it's illustrated by Tiun Yu. It's a very simple concept book with its got a poetic and whimsical kind of feel to it where children are exploring shapes and but it goes much beyond just the find a circle around you we start with that but readers are encouraged to look around them but then the author guides us to watch things swell up and become round and or how things are worn away over time to become round so it really takes this exploration another step and gives it a really fresh take the vocabulary is really rich, and the illustrations are just so cozy and inviting. That's what I loved about it. That drew me in immediately. Yes. The text mentions loving things that are around, and that's just kind of the approach they have. And I think that at the end of the story, the reader might really notice that they love things that are around, too, even if they didn't know it before. How fun. It was. All right, so we have another one here I can see. We do, and this one is Big Cat, Little Cat by Elisha Cooper. And oh, how I love a circular story. And this one is just a great one for parents and young children to share. It is one of those um, circle of life kind of stories, but it's told in a very subtle way where you wouldn't necessarily just pull this in case you've lost a pet. But just to get children thinking about that whole circle of life, um, it, we meet a cat and it starts with, there was a cat who lived alone until the day a new cat came. Big cat, little cat. And so throughout, there's these beautiful, very um, spare line drawings that are very bold. And the little kitty companions frolic about in these very simple drawings that they just beautifully illustrate the passage of time. And this author is known for real life details. And we really get that in the book where, you know, the big cat is showing the little cat the ropes. And it just has this gentle, reassuring tone, even when the day comes that the big cat has to go away. Oh. Yeah. Um, it is a realistic look at the life cycle, but it's told in the most comforting way. And on the very last spread, you know, um, it really brings home the point about that there's, again, a big cat and a little cat. I What I loved about this book, first of all, it reminds me of Kevin Hankey's, his... 
Kitty Moon book. What is that one? Kitten's First Full Moon. Yeah, Kitten's First Full Moon. I know the story is quite different, but it has a lot of play between shadows and silhouettes and black and white monochrome type stuff. And what I but I, what I loved about this book, like you said, the simple line drawings, they're... An illustration may just have one squiggle of a line, but it's so expressive of the face of the cat or of sort of the reaction that they're having and things like that. And I always, I think I really admire that in an illustrator because I don't know how they quite nail it so it's simply. very skillful. And I think children will really be drawn to it and, relax, and rea- react to it because it's not, um, it's much more sophisticated, but it's not that different conceptually from children's own drawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So it looks like you have another book for us. I do. And this is one I'm really excited that will be coming in soon. And it's Deep in the Woods by Christopher Kaur. And it is a folk tale. So it's a tale well loved and well told. It's a Russian classic. And what I'm really excited about is um, all the press that the illustrations are getting. They've mentioned neon colors and very vibrant. And that'll be a nice take on a folk tale, which I think we tend to think of as, you know, more muted and Mm -hmm. dreamy colors. So this will really be an interesting take on that. And that it's just a sweet story of cooperation and problem solving by this group of animal characters and building community. So I think that'll be a nice story for for children to hear and to share with their families. Oh, I can't wait till that one comes in. So we're just waiting on that for the March we're order? Waiting on that. Should be here any minute. Oh, man. I might have to check that out first, unless you guys beat me to the punch. Well, thank you for joining us for the Bee Cave Book Hall, Melissa. And um, we have lots of cool titles to check out. And one thing I failed to mention about the Greyhound Groundhog, so sometimes when we recommend books, the books get checked out super quick. And then... Um, people want still some of the stuff that we were talking about. We have a lot of different materials from these different authors and illustrators. And the Greyhound Groundhog, I think it's the author, is it Emily Jenkins? She's the one that was known for that Blue Bonnet award-winning book about Blackberry Fool called A Fine Dessert. And that one is just a gorgeous, unusual take on a lot of different topics told in a very simple way of throughout history of a recipe being passed down and you kind of get a sense of history that way. So there's a lot to explore even if these titles are checked out. Check out the authors and illustrators we mentioned because there's plenty to keep you busy reading until your hold comes in. But thanks for joining us and we hope to see you next time. Happy books. Happy books to you. The BK Book Hall is part of the BK Public Library's podcast channel. It is produced and edited by Megan Fisher. Thanks to the friends of the BK Public Library for the donation of our podcast equipment. For more information, go to www.bktexas.com. Please feel free to email us or leave any comments and suggestions below. We'd love to hear from you.